and Pastor J. Joyce Elliott. <laughs> Y'all weren't expecting that, were you? I wasn't either. <laughs> you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And, and how many of you know when I was talking about Minister Shadrach? I was talking about everybody in this ministry. I just want to say this. If you've been in this ministry for a few years. You're going to find yourself having to do some things at the spur of the moment. Amen. But how many of you know this is a ready ministry? This is a ministry that's on time, on point. I have never heard anyone that has been asked to do something to say no. Never heard that. And then I want to give honor again to the visionary of this house who always gives us opportunity. How many of you know this is an opportunity? And whenever we're giving an, an opportunity, we have to take it. So let's give God honor and glory for the visionary of our house. Amen. Gives us opportunities. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, how many of you in this house ever thought you were far away from God? Anybody? Oh, I saw some hands go up thought that you were far, far away. Well, what I'm going to talk about is how to get close with God. Because there is a way. How many of you know that we can be people after God's own heart? Because if David was a man after God's own heart, with all the flaws and all the things that he did, how many of you know David made some of us look like angels, amen? But God still called him a man after his own heart. How many of you want to be a person after God's own heart? Well, I saw almost every hand. Just about every hand went up. But we're going to talk about how to get close with God. How, how many of you know that there's a way that will move God in our direction if we do a certain thing? How many of you know that we have to learn how to minister to God? We already heard these before, but we have to learn how to serve God. We have to learn how to put him first in everything that we do. But what happens, there's, Mary, there's a Mary mentality and there's a Martha mentality. I was Martha, and sometimes I can still be Martha. Amen. Martha is the one that was busy doing everything else. Mary was the one that was sitting at the feet of Jesus. And then, of course, the people that go around doing everything and they're working and they think that they're, I mean, if you know that you can work so much that God will say, just sit down, just, just listen to me, just, just be quiet in my presence. But Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. And of course, when she was sitting there, Martha was running around, doing everything, taking care of this, taking care of that. Then she got a little upset because sometimes when we are not doing what God wants us to do, we get upset with the people that are doing what God wants them to do. And so she goes in to Jesus and she says to Jesus, um, um, my sister's over here uh, leaving all the work to me. And I got to do all of it. I got to cook. I got to clean. And I'm doing all this, that, and the other. And she's just sitting there. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, she's the one that's doing the right thing. She's the one that is gleaming from everything that I'm saying. And you're the one that you're going to have to come into knowing and getting the knowledge 
of just sitting at my feet. And so when we get that knowledge of sitting at the feet of Jesus and letting him actually not just pour into us all the time, but to pour into him. How many of you know, if we want to get close to Jesus, we have to tell him some things. We have to say some things to him. We should not always ask him to, will you do this? Will you do this? Will you pay my bills today? Will you, will you, will you uh, save my kids? But it's okay to pray, right? That's prayer. But when do we come to a time where we just sit at his feet and just honor him? Well, we're going to learn how to do that today. I want you to turn. Our lesson today is going to come from Psalms 34. And I want you to say amen when you get there. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, praise you, God, for the opportunity that you've given us on tonight, God, in Jesus' name. Father God, we ask in Jesus' name, God, that you, Father God, will speak on tonight, God, and that we will have ears to hear, God, and a heart to receive. So, Father God, we thank you and we praise you. We lift you up, God. We give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, and we all said, amen. amen. Say amen if you have Psalms 34. Amen. So it starts... And this is a psalm of David, and this particular psalm was written when he went to Abimelech, and um, he, he thought he could take shelter in the enemy's camp. And, of course, Abimelech, decided, he said, what is he doing here? And then, of course, David, to get out of it, David had to act like he was crazy. Anybody remember that? He had to act crazy. And so God gave him a way of escape. And so he escaped out of it, and he ends up back in his camp where he belonged. And, of course, Abimelech drove him away and said, what is this crazy man doing here but David was not crazy. He had to act crazy to get out of that situation because he probably would have been killed if he hadn't done that. And so he writes this psalm that starts with verse 1. I will bless the Lord, and we can all read it together. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, we're going to look at that. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. His praise. In other words, David is going to tell God just what he means to him. Do we know who Jesus is to us? And so when we look at it, what are the names of Jesus that we can give back to him? And so, I mean, if you know, Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. And I'm just going to give you a few. Jesus is the Lamb of God. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first. He is the last. He is the King of the Jews, and he's the soon coming King of the... He's already King of everything. Amen. He's wonderful. He's the counselor. He's the mighty God. He's the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. Start telling Jesus what he is or who he is. If you want to get close to him, that's a way of serving him and ministering to him. You see, he ministers to us through his word. But do we minister to him through giving him what he wants to hear? And so if we do that, how many of you know, when we start honoring Jesus, when we start just ministering him, to him and just worshiping him, because when we tell him who he is, that's a form of what? Worship. Amen? And we start worshiping God. Do you know 
every time we worship God, that brings the Holy Spirit onto the scene. And that brings us closer to God. And it can be done because it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, how many of you know there's something that's in our mouths all the time? We're saying something. But is it praise? Is it worship? Is it good stuff? Is, what is it that's coming out of our mouths? Uh, I think the pastor on Sunday said something about their, that they're cursing Christians. How many of you know if the wrong thing is coming out of our mouth, guess what? That pushes the Holy Spirit farther away from us. If we want to get close to God, we have to say what he needs to hear, not what we want to say. And so if we are able to say what he wants to say, wants to hear, then we're going to get close to God. And certain things happen when we start getting into the presence of God. And you see, if we can, and, and David says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So that means wherever it is that we are, words of praise can come forth. God, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Wherever you are, that's where I want to be. Whatever comes forth, he will give you words to say about him. And then verse 2 says, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. So how many of you know we boast on some things? But most of the time, we boast on the things that we are doing. We boast on our gifts. We boast on our talents. We boast, and those are all the things that God gave us that we boast on. Oh, I know how to do this. I know how to do this or that. And of course, how many of you know, God gave us those gifts to honor him with the gift. But David said, my soul, when I boast, I'm going to make my boast in the Lord. And so he's saying, I am going to brag on God. And you see, when we brag on God, tell him exactly who he is, what he is to us, then here comes the Holy Spirit pushing us closer to God. If we want to get close to God, these are the things that we do. How many of you want to get close to God? Well, we're telling you how to do it. We boast and we brag on God. How many of you know that sometimes we get with our friends and we get with different people and we are afraid to say anything about God because of the fact we don't think that it's appropriate. But how many of you know that the devil thinks everything is appropriate? My nephew, and I, and I got to tell this little story. My nephew, I only have one nephew, well, I have one nephew. It's my bro- I only have one brother, and he had two kids. And out of those two kids, my nephew is the one that clings, we, we, you know, we're, we're close. Well, he's a singer. He's a rapper. And um, he texts me, and I was, I was over at Mother Diana's house, and he texts me. And he said, I got some music that I want you to hear. And I was like, oh, yeah, send it. I mean, he sent that music. I was trying to, I was trying to get through it, and I finally just said, no, I can't do it. <laughs> I mean, every other word, it was crazy. And so... <laughs> And so I had to handle it some kind of way. And so I text him back. I got my phone. I should try to read that text to you. But I text him back. And I said, you 
are such a gifted musician. And I said, but you got to come away from all of that cursing. I said, because that takes you away from the purpose by which God wants you to fulfill. And so I told him, I said, you start doing this music for Jesus and watch him elevate you. I said, watch him do something different. If you, if you give this gift to him. And so it was, it was, I said a whole lot of other stuff in there too, but this was, this was the gist of it. That you, your music is to glorify God, not to glorify man. Because all that was glory, that, that, I couldn't even get through it. I, did, I, I think I listened to the first few words, but the message, and I told him, I said, your, your, your music is your life. And I said, you need to let people know your life story without the cursing. And because it was a testimony, it would have been a beautiful testimony had he just left out all of that. But he doesn't, he's not at that point yet. But whether he, but, what, but I did ask him to send me some clean music. In other words, don't send the music. I did put that in there, evangelist. I did. That was part of the text. You know, send me the clean version of what you do. Don't send me that other stuff. And he, he, you know what he did? He did write me back. He texted me back. And he said, thank you so much. I love you, auntie. <laughs> and so something went in. Something went there. But his music is going to be profound because we call that forth already. And, he, and, he, and, and one thing that he did do, he got a way he was going to go to, what is it that you go through when you're trying to get your music uh, out there? You, you, there's, some, there's, a, there's something that you have to do to get your music out. But he was trying to get his music out there and one of the things that happened was he found out that they want you to go through these rituals. He found that out a long time ago, maybe about 10 years ago. He found out, and he said, I'm not doing that. He, 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 he was trying to get his stuff out there, but he was doing it the secular way. And the secular way was to have all the words and and if you did certain things, they would pump up your music. And he just said, I ain't doing whatever they tell me to do. And he didn't do it. He still got some cleaning up to do, amen. But I really believe that if he gets it right, that he's going to, he's going to do very well. We're in Psalms 34. Our soul makes is boast in the Lord. So we boast on the Lord no matter what the situation is. And then the humble shall hear of it and be glad. In other words, when we boast on the Lord, somebody that doesn't even know the Lord is going to hear it. And they're going to be glad and they will come to the Lord because we boasted on the Lord. The enemy doesn't want us to boast on the Lord. He just doesn't want us to say anything. They, they want to take everything out of the schools, but guess what? There are certain states where the Lord's prayer has to be posted in the school. Did anybody read that? About there, there are certain states where they're posting the Lord's prayer. No, no. Is it the Lord's prayer or the Ten Commandments? I think it's the Ten Commandments in the classrooms again. So God is having his way, even though it doesn't look like it. He's having his way. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. 
And then it goes on to say in verse 3, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. So in other words, we boast in the Lord. We start telling people who God is to us. And then somebody's going to hear it and, and be glad about it. And then David goes on and says, magnify that those same people, those same people that came to the Lord because of the fact you were boasting in the Lord. Those are the people that will magnify the Lord with you. Let us exalt his name together. And you see, David, after he went through all of that stuff that he went through, he knew that there was a God. And so God has to be real to us. And you see, we have to be at a place where we begin to seek the face of the Lord and get close to him. And you see, put him so first that everything that we do has God in it. What am I going to do today, God? Where do you want me to go today, God? What do you want me to do? Where, who do you want me to talk to? Who on my job do I need to speak to? When we get that mentality, the spirit of the Lord is going to move in us, through us, and push us close to him. Because we want to be close to the Lord, but we have to do the things that's necessary to get close to the Lord. Because most of the time we go to these jobs and we end up doing what the world system is doing instead of what God is doing. And so we have to do something so that people will know that we are separated from the world. It's easy to do what we want to do. It's easy to join the world. Because when I was working, and I haven't worked for a while, I've been retired for a while. But when I was working in the school, everybody knew Miss Elliot, oh, the Christian lady. Even, even the other, I was a guidance counselor, even the other counselors, when they, when they would come in, uh, we want to join this Christian club, and they would, oh, go to her office. They didn't, it was kind of funny. But I felt this way. I felt I was sent to that job because I was supposed to make a difference on the job. And when my time was over at that job, I went to the, another job because I was trying to get the reason I, I, I left that particular job. I stayed in the county, but our church moved to Orlando. And I was trying to get as close to Orlando as I could. So I took the job in Deltona. That was as close as I could get without leaving Volusia County. But even at that second school, when I went there, they said that because there were two of us that were Christians in there. One was the secretary and myself, and the assistant principal was. And so my office was here, and there was the assistant principal and the secretary's office. Do you know she allowed us to pray with the kids? And uh, they would send those kids, and they, they would send the kids to us. Well, they would send them to me, actually. But I would go to the secretary, and I would say, this one is doing this, that, and the other. So we together would pray. And do you know we got the reputation that the kids that we dealt with did not come back a second and third time because of the fact we showed them Christ? We showed them Christ, and we, and we allowed them to get saved. But you see, it's the way it is right now, they say you can't do that. They say you can get fired now because I am trying to, you know, we don't want nobody fired. But God would give you an open door. We learned that. God would give us an open door. It goes on to say, I sought the Lord. Now, this is what happens when you magnify the Lord, when you praise him continually. Now, this is the outcome of it in verse 4. 
It says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. How many of you know David was in fear? He was in fear of his life. And we have to look at what are the fears that we have? If we give God the glory that's due to him, we can seek him and he's going to answer us. He's going he's gonna to do whatever it is that he can do because we are making ourselves available to him through worship. And how many of you want to do that? How many of you want to? This is how to get close to the Lord. I have another little testimony. When I first got saved, I heard the story of this young man. And this young man was on, I didn't watch Christian TV. This is, this is not a good testimony here. But I didn't watch Christian TV because I thought that was not, I didn't think they were up to standard, you know. But I watched the other TV. <laughs> but when I got saved, I started watching Christian TV. And this young man was on, one, I don't even know which channel he was on, I don't, but he was given his testimony. And he said, I, got, I, I, got, I, I accepted Christ, and every morning I told the Lord, I'm going to give you 15 minutes. So he'd get up, and for 15 minutes, he would just worship God. He would just say, God, I love you. I appreciate you. I, I, I just want you in my life. And he would do that for 15 minutes every day. And he never, without fail, he would do it only 15 minutes. And somebody would say, I think you got to do it more than that. But he said, I'm going to give you 15 minutes. So he did that for almost over a year. And one day, he got up and he said, Lord, I appreciate you. I love you. And he went through his little ritual. Spirit of the Lord came through there and knocked that young man down, filled him with the Holy Spirit. He got up with a new lease on life. And he became, he started traveling around the world. And he was really, I can't, I, I can't tell you who he is right now because I didn't even know who he was then. But I know this, he did mighty things from God off of 15 minutes of worship every day. So, how many of you know there's folks that do an hour every day? Keep doing it. And it's not about feelings. It's not, about, it's not about emotions, because what the devil will come along, if you don't feel anything, he'll say, you know, well, you, you're not in with God like that, because he wants us to be emotional people. But how many of you know, we worship God through our spirit. We worship him with spirit and spirit and truth. And I look at this. If he did that for that young man, in 15 minutes, how many of you know, those of you that come to this altar and you come and you come regularly, God is going to honor that. Because how many of you know, it takes something to get up and come. It takes something to lay before the Lord and call out to God. It takes something, it takes something powerful. If we want to be close with God. We got to do what he wants us to do, not what we want to do. But anyway, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. And they looked unto, because of what this person did, they looked unto God, unto him, and their faces were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. So I read that again, the way the, the book says it. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. And how many of you know that God will take no matter what we go through, he'll take away the guilt and the shame. But what do we do? We honor him. We honor him with everything that we have. And we, we look to him. We seek his face and, and we glorify who he is. 
and, and you don't have to do it forever and ever and ever. Oh, I think if I do this for two hours, then if I do it for three hours, and how many of you know you can't be consistent in two and three and four hours? Do what you do unto the Lord and watch him work. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. And then David is this poor man in verse 6. The poor man cried out. He said, this poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. And so how many of you know, some of us got troubles. Some of us got bills. Some of us got sicknesses. But how many of you know, whatever it is, he said, this poor man cried out to God and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of these different troubles. How many of you want to be saved out of your troubles? Want to be saved out of some situations? We know what to do. And then it goes on to say, the angel, these are the benefits of seeking God and ministering to him and giving him honor, giving him glory, giving him praise. The angel of the Lord, verse 7, encamps all around those who fear him. And, he, and what happens? Delivers them. How I many people want to be delivered out of your situation? You want to get delivered out of your situation, we are learning what to do. Because all of this comes when we give God his due. When we give God, when we minister to him, when we put him first, when we make him feel good about what he's already done. How many of you know that Thanksgiving is in that as well? We thank him for everything that we've done. Sometimes we get up in the morning and we just go straight to the restroom, to the bathroom. We don't even think about the fact, oh, he woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. Look, I got breath. I'm breathing. I I'm not sick. I'm walking. I got my limbs. We got to look at the fact that God has done all of that for us. And when we do that and when we recognize him for what he's done, then God will send his angels to take charge over us and to deliver us out of all of these situations that the enemy has given us. How I many of you know that a lot of the situations that the enemy has set it up for us? Because the enemy wants to distract us. And, I mean, and he can do that. But we got to believe the voice of the Lord over the enemy. Amen. We got to believe the, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise because God is the one that's almighty. Verse 8 is really good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. How many of you know that when we start honoring God, we will be able to, to taste his goodness. Amen. We'll be able to taste who he is because God wants to honor us. He doesn't want us to be in these negative situations. He doesn't want us to be in, but, but we got to be able to put him so first in our lives to be able to just get from him because we always want to ask for him how many of you know that many times we're takers? We take a lot. We do a lot. But we want him to, we want him to honor us when we haven't learned how to honor him. I want you to go to 1 Chronicles 16th chapter. And this one is going to talk about calling upon his name and seeking his face. Say amen when you get it. Okay, we're going to start at verse 8. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. 
make known the deeds, his deeds among the people. And this is letting us know, make known his deeds among the people. That means we are going to be bragging on God. We're going to be telling other people what God has done for us. Because we always use this scripture, we overcome, we overcame him by the blood of the lamb and what? The word of our testimony. And this has to do with our testimony, that we make his deeds known among the people. And most of the people that we make his, deed, his deeds known to are people that don't know him. Because, I mean, if you know, we're the ones that are supposed to go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come. Amen. And how are they going to come? They're going to come by what God did for us. Those are his deeds toward us. He gives us a testimony that we can use because someone is going to need to hear what God did for you and for me. We can use our testimony to open any door. How many of you know that? We can open the door with the word of our testimony. Verse 9 says, sing to him. Sing songs, psalms to him. How many of you sing to God? I know, I, know, I know there's some worshipers in the house. You don't have to have a good voice. You don't even have to carry a tune. How many of you know Mother Diana is a worshiper? Amen. And how many of you know she is going to sing before the Lord no matter what? She is going to worship no matter what. But you don't have to be able to sing like somebody else. Sky has a beautiful voice. And, and she and Minister Shadrach, Minister Sky, Minister Shadrach, they lead us into the presence of God. But what if you can't sing like them? Does that mean that you're not supposed to use your voice before the Lord? If he loves that, if that's going to push you closer to him, then that's what you're supposed to do. Sing to him. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. And see, so you can take notes on that. You can go back to these scriptures, and it's going to tell you what you can do if you want to be close to God and if you want him to respond to you. These are the things that we do. It says, verse 10 says, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. So this is a type of seeking him. When you are glorifying him, even to you, for, just for him. How many of you know, have you, how many of you have ever gone into your prayer closets and just glorify God. And that's the way you're supposed to do it. Just go in your prayer closet. Go in there and close the door. Go in the bathroom. Go somewhere. And just glorify the name of the Lord. Amen. Glory in his name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Verse 11 says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. You're not going to many, too many times see, seek his hands. But you're going to see in the word to seek what? His face. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works, which he has done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O, o seed of Israel, his servant. We can say, O seed of jump. His servant, you children of Jacob, you children of jump, his chosen one. Amen, amen, and amen. And I'm going to read just a few more in um, Psalms 34, and then we're going to close. I'm going to start with verse 8, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to read it. You can read it with me if you want to. Verse 8 says, O taste and see that the Lord is what? 
Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want or lack to those who fear him. The young lions, the young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any what? Good thing. Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you to fear or reverence the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may do, see good? Keep, now this is how you do it. You love many days and you want to see good? See goodness in those days? Keep your tongue, verse 13, keep your tongue from what? Evil and your lips from what? Speaking guile or deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and do what? And pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and he saves such as have a contrite spirit. That's a humble spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord does what? De delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his what? of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's give God honor and glory. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of the honor and the glory. How many of you got something out of that? How many of you want to get closer to the Lord? And how many of you got what you do. Go back and study Psalms 34 and, and uh, 1 Chronicles 16, and you will have it. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise one more time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for Jonathan on, Minister Jonathan on the first row. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Well, we are going to prepare our hearts to give, amen, because how many of you know, we always say the same thing, giving is a part of what? Giving is a part of worship, and how many of you know that we worship God in everything that we do? We worship God on our jobs. Sometimes we don't know that we worship God on our jobs, but that's what we're supposed to do, amen? Whatever it is, we're supposed to give God honor and glory. Amen. But we want to, you to remember that God wants us to minister to him. He wants us to get close to him. He wants us to honor him. And as you get your envelopes, we want you to write on it. God, I want to be close to you. God, I want to be close to you. And of course, if you mean it with your whole heart, how many of you know that the Bible says that we're supposed to seek him with our whole heart? And that can be difficult sometimes to seek God with our whole heart, with our whole being. But guess what? It's worth a try, isn't it? Because if you want God to move for you, we got to move for him. Amen? 
We got to be able to seek him by giving him glory, by allowing him, by worshiping him, by giving him everything that he wants. Because God wants us so badly and he wants to do so much more. But if we are distant from him, it's going to be hard for him to do more in our lives. We got to look 24-7 as to how we're going to minister to him, how we're going to worship him, how we're going to bless the Lord at all times and his praise continually be on, in our mouths. How many of you try already for, the, for praise to be in your mouth continually? Yeah, that's good. That's good because it, it, it can be hard, but if we practice it, God will do something phenomenal in our lives if we allow him to. But we have to have the desire, God, I want to know you more. God, I want to be close to you. God, I want, I want to serve you more. God, I, I, I want to just minister to you. I just want to do what you want me to do to get close to you. And then once you do that, when you make that a habit, how many of you know, it may not even seem like it's a change, but guess what? You're changing every time. We're changing every time we do it. We are changing because God is wanting to do a new thing in us. He's wanting us, raise your seed before the Lord. And if there's someone that does not have a seed and you want to, to give in this offering, you can come to the front and someone will give you, a, um, someone will give you an offering. What did I say put on the back? God, I want to be cl close to you. God, I want to be close to you. God, I want to be close. How many of you want God to be close to you? And how many of you want to be close to God? Well, try this. If that young man took 15 minutes every day and the Lord showed up, and I know that there's people in here that give God more time than that. You need an offering? All right. This young lady, Destiny, needs an offering, and somebody is coming forth to bless her right now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amen, amen, and amen. When you have your offering, raise it before the Lord so that we'll know. All right, we got a couple of more. But how many of you believe that God is good? God is good. His mercy endures for what? Forever. And I mean, how, how many of you need his grace and mercy every day? Huh? I mean, amen. All day, every day. All day, every day. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any more seeds that are out? We got a couple of more. But how many of you um, took something from the word today and will practice it? Let's give the Lord a hand of praise if that's you. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can go ahead and do it. All right, you can stand to your feet. Is it working? Okay, you can point to your seed. I forgot to say we want you to turn off your phones during church, put it on silent. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we lift this seat up to you on tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, God, we ask, God, that you will open up windows of heaven, God, for those who sold in this offering, God. 
open up windows of heaven that we won't have, pour out blessings that we won't have room to receive, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, let this offering go forth, God, in the name of Jesus, to meet every need, God, that we need, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father God, we ask, God, a blessing, a special blessing upon the leaders of our house, Dr. Ron Hepburn, Pastor Fong Hepburn, God. Father God, we ask, God, that wherever they are, God, that you would pour out blessings upon them, God, in the name of Jesus. And, Father God, we plead the blood of Jesus around them, God. We ask you to keep them, God, in Jesus' name, God. Honor them, God. Continue to honor them in all that they do, God, in the name of Jesus. And, Father God, we thank you and we praise you, God, that we want to be close to you, God. And, Father God, we will take this word in our hearts, God, in the name of Jesus. We will hide this word, God, so that we will not sin against you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And, Father God, we pray a blessing over every car as we leave, God. We plead the blood of Jesus around every individual, every car. And we will get to our destination safely in the name of Jesus. And you are dismissed in the presence of the Lord. And give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you leave this place. Amen. Get connected with Jump Ministries Global Church. Be sure to follow us on your favorite social media networks and never miss out on our bi-monthly men and women's prayer services, our youth events and activities, our global outreach and community celebrations, our competitions, conferences, or even just to get that one word to encourage you. Just visit jumpministries.org. Building people, changing lives, and on the move. Joyously unveiling the master's plan. Discover your faith. Experience Jump Ministries Global Church. So if you go to the wrong people for comfort, they can keep you in your condition. Building people. Changing lives. And on the move. Jump Ministries Global Church.